In the Christian sphere, doubts often arise about the appropriateness of certain practices, such as whether a believer can listen to secular music. Dear listener, today we will address this topic and answer your questions, such as is it a sin to listen to secular music? What does the Bible tell us about it? And other similar issues. Many believers ask these questions frequently, and the way we approach them can lead to us being labeled as legalistic or worldly. We will analyze this issue in the light of the sacred writings and thus have a firm conviction. Before you start, make sure you are subscribed to this channel and support me by liking this video so that YouTube recommends this content so we can reach more people with the Word of God. Let us begin. I think we are all connected in some way to music. We can affirm that music has great power and influence on people. Through music, people express their sorrows, joys, love failures, ambitions, and even vulgarities. However, as Christians, we ask ourselves what our stance should be towards secular music. Should we listen to it or not? Let me tell you about an experience I had. On one occasion, at the Bible seminar I attended, a special event was held where each student was encouraged to ask controversial questions. There were three professors as panelists. At that time, someone raised the question of whether a believer can listen to secular music and delved a little deeper into whether a believer can even dance dances specific to each culture. One of the panelists responded that we cannot separate ourselves from our culture, but rather we must be part of it. This teacher stated that it was acceptable to listen to secular music as long as certain guidelines were followed about what music could or could not be listened to. Additionally, he encouraged students to be part of supporting culture. The response generated great controversy among another professor who was also part of the panel, as well as among the students. This teacher strongly opposed it and stated that believers must separate themselves from the culture and customs of the world. This caused some confusion among the students. Dear listener, when discussing this matter, we can notice that there is a discrepancy of opinions among believers globally. First, we will examine those who defend the possibility of listening to secular music, followed by those who take a contrary position. And finally, we will present compelling biblical arguments regarding this topic. Let's look at those who argue that it is legal to listen to secular music. There are Christians who believe that there is nothing wrong with listening to secular music as long as the lyrics are not offensive towards God or explicitly incite you to violate His commandments. This group finds valuable guidance on what type of music is appropriate to listen to in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Let's read the biblical text. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honest, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report. If there is any virtue, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about this. It is argued that, taking this verse as a reference, secular music has the ability to be beneficial by transmitting positive messages and deep reflections on life. If the lyrics are pure, kind, and honest, even Christians can enjoy them. It is recognized that much secular music does not meet these criteria, since it includes violence or justifies immorality, among other aspects. However, if a song promotes values such as purity and true love in marriage, even if it does not mention God, it is considered a positive message conveyed through music. On the other hand, those who share this opinion highlight the existence of numerous secular musicians with great talent and consider that Christians, especially those who are part of bands, including the praise and worship group of the church, can improve and enrich their musical technique when listening to these artists. Therefore, they consider it completely legal to listen to secular music as long as it meets the standard they consider appropriate. Now, dear listeners, let us now analyze the opinion of those believers who consider that a believer should not listen to secular music. They argue that, whether evident from the lyrics or not, secular music has been influenced by and dedicated to things other than God. Secular artists often dishonor God with their words and actions, which is clearly harmful to any believer. However, this group of believers also warns that even those musicians who are not openly against God, 
offend him by living and expressing their opinion on life as if God does not exist. Dear listeners, on this occasion we have examined the two positions found in Christian groups. Depending on the position you take, you may receive criticism such as being labeled legalistic or worldly, or others may prefer to remain neutral. Now, I would like to share with you the arguments of studies carried out by experts about music, its power, and its influence on human beings. An experiment conducted by Japanese scientist Masaru Emoto showed that water molecules react differently depending on the music they listen to. When satanic music was played, the molecules showed a negative and despairing reaction, but when spiritual music was played, they took on a beautiful appearance. Experts say the music we listen to can have both positive and negative impacts on our behavior, relationships, decisions, and character. It is no coincidence that young people who are exposed to violent music tend to act violently. Dear listener, on this occasion we will explore the topic in light of the scriptures, which will provide us with clarity in our doubts and dilemmas. Music was created by God exclusively for Him, as we can see in several passages in the Bible where angelic beings praise the Lord in the heavenly panorama. In the book of Ezekiel in the Bible, the moment when Lucifer was created is also narrated, mentioning that there was music in heaven. Some have considered that Lucifer was the director of praise in heaven. Let's read Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 13. In Eden, in the garden of God you were. Of every precious stone was your garment. Of cornerine, topaz, jasper, chrysolite, beryl, and onyx. Of sapphire, carbuncle, emerald, and gold. The beauty of your drums and flutes were prepared for you on the day of your creation. We all know that Lucifer rebelled against God and was expelled from heaven. His satanic plan has not stopped. Satan has always corrupted the sacred and pure that God has created. In this case, he has corrupted music through the human being. In chapter 4 of the book of Genesis, in verse 21, the relationship between music and human beings is mentioned for the first time in the Bible. Let's read the biblical text. And his brother's name was Jubal, who was the father of all those who play the harp and flute. In this verse, Jubal is mentioned as the father of all those who play the harp and flute. However, Jubal was the eighth descendant of Cain, who had been cursed by God. His name also means one who flows, but in Hebrew the word used is tafaz, which means to manipulate, capture, and seize, that is, one who flows through manipulation. Dear listener, it is important to recognize that secular music has been used as a tool by Satan to divert millions of people from the worship of God. Instead of focusing on praising God, secular music focuses on personal ego and idolatry of the opposite sex. Both sex and animals are glorified, and even the glorification of Satan is sublimated in music. Let's read what Romans chapter 1 verse 25 says, Since they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, honoring and worshiping creatures rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Next. What we will show you will provide you with the clarity you need to make a decision. First of all, praise is for God. Every born-again believer knows that he must praise God. The Bible exhorts us to do this permanently. Let's read the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 19. Speaking among yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and praising the Lord in your hearts. This verse mentions the importance of praising God both publicly and privately, and making music in our hearts. When we praise God through music, our hearts are filled with joy and our hardships disappear, allowing the Holy Spirit to flow into our lives in a spiritual way. Do you need secular music to relax, cheer up, or feel good? You have the answer. Sometimes believers who enjoy secular music spend more time on these songs and listen to very few songs that glorify the Lord. However, someone might say they want to sing to their wife and need to perform a song by Cheyenne or another secular artist. Dear brother, you can praise and sing, but consider that even in doing so, you must glorify God. Secular songs exalt women or men in a way that indirectly suggests that there is no place for God and that they do not need Him. 
Secondly, the believer is required to separate himself from the world. There are many who do not understand our decision to distance ourselves spiritually from the world. The Bible is clear that believers are not to adapt to the world, but to separate themselves from it. When we talk about the world, we are referring to the system that opposes God and that glorifies the flesh and sin, influenced by Satan. Secular music is also included in this system. Let's read the first epistle of Peter, chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires you previously had while in your ignorance. The life of a selfish and worldly person who does not know God is due to ignorance. Before knowing God, didn't we have favorite artists whose lyrics and songs made us sigh and cry so that we were their fans? Dear listener, I say this from personal experience. I loved my artists and their songs, but when I met the Lord, I detached myself from them and began to fill my life with the things of God. The kingdom of God has its own music and the world has it too. Dear listener, nowadays you can see how even Christian music is corrupted. The lyrics of the songs do not reflect biblical teaching and the rhythms lack spirituality. It is crucial to be selective with the Christian music we consume since if this happens in the Christian sphere, how dangerous is it to listen to secular music? Third, as believers, we must seek our edification. The believer must constantly seek the edification of his spiritual life. So we ask ourselves, how does secular music help us in this process? Music has a great influence on our emotions, feelings, and even our character, as we have seen. If we are called to be like Christ, how would this help us? But when you listen to worship of God, if you are really a Christian, you will realize that that music takes you to the third heaven, makes you see sin as something despicable, and inclines you to praise God and also edifies you. So spiritual music is going to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Of course, that is the purpose for which God created music, to give glory to Him and connect us with the third heaven. Fourth, believers must be wise. Let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as fools, but as wise. Looking around, everywhere, the Christian must be very careful, be alert, and never neglect his steps. He must clearly show that he has put off the old man and has put on the new man. This requires diligence. The world is full of perversity. Satan has set traps along the way to cause us to stumble. Some believers doubt certain practices because they are not explicitly mentioned in the Bible. However, God has given us the necessary wisdom to reflect and act with discernment before carrying them out. Dear listener, let's reflect for a moment. If we have the mind of Christ, would a wise and mature believer listen to secular music? You have the answer. The wise believer always seeks to ensure that everything is in accordance with the will of God recognizing that everything is permitted, but not everything is convenient. If you are a believer and decide to listen to secular music, it is likely that every day you feel more attracted to it, and, in some way, your senses become sharper by listening to more music of that type, which can lead you to fall under its influence on many occasions. You decide today what to listen to. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, so when you hear the Word of God, it cleans your ears and creates faith in you. I am firmly convinced that a believer should not listen to secular music, nor music that calls itself Christian, if it is not in line with the principles of the Bible. Therefore, dear listener, you make a choice by listening, but let me tell you not to obstruct your faith, contaminating your spiritual and physical hearing with secular music. If you feel influenced by secular music and think you are acting wrong, Recite this prayer with me. Dear God, I know there are things I like, but you don't like them. Therefore, I seek to defend my carnal desires. However, today I understand that I must give all the glory to you. I ask the Holy Spirit to help me understand and enlighten my understanding. From now on, I will only listen to sacred music, God, music that connects me with your presence, music that edifies me and strengthens my soul. Help me to be wise, my beloved God. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Thank you for joining us until the end of this video. It is always a pleasure to share the Word of God with you. See you in the next video.